Welcome to C Sharp Code. Last episode, we got started on our app. We installed the packages and did some cleanup. In this episode, we're going to create our entities and connect to the da database using Entity Framework. Remember, this series is more of a walkthrough. So if you're stuck or something is unclear, just drop a comment below and they'll do a, a, a separate tutorial for it. Let's get to it. A book has one author and an author can write multiple books. A book can belong to multiple genres and a genre can be associated with multiple books. To do that, we create a joint table called book genre. A book genre is associated with one book, but a book can be associated with multiple book genre. A book genre instance is associated with one book, but a book can be associated with multiple book genre. A book genre instance can be, can be associated with only one genre, but a genre can be associated with multiple book genre instances. A user can have one cart, and a cart is owned by one user. User can place multiple orders, but an order is placed by one user. A cart can contain multiple cart items, but a cart item belongs to one cart. An order can contain multiple order items, but an order item belongs to one order. A cart item refers to one book, but a book can be referred to by multiple cart items. An order item refers to one book, but a book can be referred to by multiple order items. We're gonna start by creating a new folder to keep things organized and we're gonna call it entities. Within this folder, we're gonna add all the, the entities that we've seen earlier. I've already created those the, the properties of each entity, so this video doesn't take too long. And now I'm just copying and pasting uh, all the, the, the properties inside the, the appropriate classes. You might, you might be wondering why we have this class application user inheriting from identity user. Reason why is because we are using ESP.NET Core Identity, which is a membership system uh, that allows you to add login functionalities uh, to your application. And this class that we're creating here is extending this identity user uh, and we can add additional properties to our user, such as the list of orders, reviews, and the shopping cart. Now moving to the next step, we're gonna create a new folder and we're gonna call it data. You can call it data access if you want. And we're gonna create a new class, call it data con context, and it's gonna inherit from ID identity DB context. This is because we are using the ISP.NET uh, identity. Otherwise, it's just gonna inherit from the DB context. Next, we're gonna tell entity framework to create for us all the entities that we've created uh, in the entities file. Next thing, we're gonna uh, override the method on model creating. And if you have something really simple, usually you don't need to add any anything. But in our case, we have some uh, we have a relationship that that is a little bit complex for entity framework to do on its own. So we need to tell to, to tell it how to do it uh, uh, correctly. And this is how we tell the entity framework that the book genre table is a joint table between the book table and the genre table. Now we're going to set up our database connection. This is done using a connection string in our program.cs file. Here, we're telling our app to look for a connection string named local server. The local server is a setting we'll add to our app setting.json file. In this file, we specify the details of our database like the server name and the database name. To find the server name, we're going to open the SQL uh, server and we're going to copy the name of the server and pass it into our connection string. Here is the name of the server. And here we can define 
the name of the database that, that is going to be created. Next, we'll configure our data context to work with our database. In program.cs, we'll add the addDB context factory method. This one will allow us to register our data context with a dependency injection system. That means we're going to be able to create new instances of our data context whenever we need to interact with the database. With our data context set up, it's time to create a database migration. We do this by opening the package manager console and typing the following co command add migration and then uh, we need to give it a name doesn't matter you can give it any name you want and you wait for for it to finish a migration file has been added to your files you can check to see if everything is is okay and now we type the command update database this will save the changes done by the migration and actually update them into the database. Here, I did a mistake. I should have typed update database instead of update migration. Now, if we go to our SQL server, we're going to find that a new database had been created with all the tables that we want. And with that, we've successfully set up our data context, created our initial database migration, and they applied it to our database. In the upcoming episodes, we'll dive deeper into the functionalities of our application, including creating our repositories, setting up our services, and crafting the user interface. Stay tuned. <music>